right, this is gonna sound a little crazy, but I'm at a 150 foot drop. And I'm gonna try to throw the swim bait from up here. So this is not very standard. I've got this Kitek swim bait that you normally use on a Texas rig or something like that and a 1.5 ounce jig head. All right, if this doesn't work, I've got bait too. Look how much line is on my spool right now. Let's cast it out and see how much it goes down. Look, it took nearly all the line off my spool. Damn, got snagged. I think it's probably a bad idea. There's too many rocks down there. There, that broke it. Well, that failed miserably. Let's try plan B, real bait. It's pretty turbulent down there. Probably not the best day for right here, but I give it a try anyway. All right, see what we got in here. I'm just gonna take out one of these 30 pound surf leaders. Sometimes when you get them out of the pack like this, the swivel will almost be coming out of the loop. Like if you cast it out, it'll just come right off. So always double check these, especially if you get thicker line because it's so stiff. Just thread it through one time and then put it back. And now you're in action, ready to go. It's not gonna go anywhere. Oh, all my swim baits. I think I maybe did a little overkill coming out with all this stuff today. Now I'm gonna use these size one hooks. And I personally like to just put a snap swivel before I attach my leader. That way, if I want to switch anything else out, I can do it really quick. I don't have to retie anything. So on these pre-made surf leaders, one end has just a swivel. That's where you attach it to either your snap swivel or whatever else you're going to use. And on the other end, it has a snap swivel, and that's where you attach your weight. So I will be using a size 4 disc weight. I'm going for a pretty big fish, and I've got size 1 hooks, so I'm really just going to break this right there in half. Take the shell off still frozen but it'll thaw off really fast in the water and I like to leave the tail on because when it's in the water it has a little bit more movement so I'll throw it on one time and two times well that cliff didn't quite work out so I came over to the south side of the cliff a little bit protected from the wind a little bit too rough here for a swim bait though so I'm gonna try the same thing again surf leader and some shrimp I was getting bites on the other side but I couldn't land it being so high on the cliff Nice and deep there, I like it. Um, I think I have to re-spool my line. Would you say? Literally down to six inches of line. Oh, there's a bite. There's a fish near my bait, that's for sure. It was just like a nibble, nibble. Now when people start fishing, when they're absolute beginners, when they feel that nibble, nibble, they'll just set the hook. But that you, you're probably gonna miss the fish. You only want to set the hook when you feel it go like blah, 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 blah. That's when you know it's, the fish is hooked, it's in its lip, and it's trying to swim away. And that's what that little uh, that is. There's fish on here. Don't know what it is. Feels pretty big. I got to get it in position to land it now. I don't think this is a perch. See, I'm giving it some slack, hoping it'll swim out of the hole that he's in. I don't know if you can see my pole or not, but it shakes every once in a while. Any movement that I feel right now, I want to tug because when he moves, he's free. He's not expanding his fins. He's not getting his gills expanded. So that's my chance to pull him up. Maybe I could try at another angle. Nope, that didn't work. I mean, no doubt about it, there's a fish on here. And I don't want to give up on, me, on him yet. I don't want to break the line yet. I got him. I got him out. Just got to be patient. You get these nice rockfish like that. Sometimes they'll swim into a hole. It's brown rockfish. And the way you hold these is kind of is like a bass. 
They don't have sharp teeth or anything like that, so you can hold them by the mouth. That's my lunch. I'm gonna throw them in. Actually, I'm gonna bleed him right now. All right, if you're squeamish, don't watch this. All right, look, so now instead of cutting its gills like people normally do to bleed fish, I'm going to cut its collar because that's directly right in front of the heart so it'll bleed out a lot faster. So let me show you. Right when I cut that collar, watch the blood come out. I don't know if you can see that the blood or the heart pumping like that. That's a really good way to bleed them, just like that. Sorry if you're squeamish, but just wanted to demonstrate. Another way to bleed these fish is by the tail. You want to cut through the spinal cord. And once you cut through the spinal cord, it'll cut where the blood runs through, and that's another way to bleed it out. If you want to just hang it like that, that'll get all the blood out. So now it's bleeding from two places, and when you're ready to eat the fish, it'll have fresh, nice white meat. I got this, you know what that means. And I got that, you know what that means. So I brought some charcoal out with me, some instant light stuff. It's gonna take about 10 minutes for this stuff to heat up, so while that heats up, I'll gut the fish. Even though these are instant light, it still helps get everything lighted evenly if you have some paper. So I know I said it already, but the reason why I like to cut the tail, especially if you're outdoors or something, you can just hang them by the mouth. And if you cut the spinal cord, all the blood will drip from the spinal cord. The best way to get the blood out is to cut from the throat, because it's right by the heart. As you saw, the heart was still beating. All that blood will come out a lot easier. But another way to get any blood that might be left over in the bottom, cut the tail, cut the spinal cord, leave the skin on the other side. So if you do want to fillet it, you can hold it like a handle. All right, we'll put this guy back in the water. All this stuff here, all the other fish can feed on that. His stomach was completely empty. And you can scrape this silver lining out of the fish. And I don't know if you can see that right now, but you'll see it after it's cooked. This meat is nice, white, beautiful, ready to eat. Now I'm gonna cook this entire fish whole. So I wanna scale it. I'm gonna eat the skin and all. Just going backwards on the scales with my knife going all the way up to the head all the way to the belly getting all these scales off here's some puddles that have been washed up here at the high tide all right charcoals are doing their thing spread them out a little bit make sure everything's getting lit now how i'm going to cook this rockfish is a little bit differently than i normally do usually i make fillets on these fish but this one i'm going to do it a little bit special so if a fish is big, to get it to cook evenly, one trick is to give it some slices along its side like that, all the way down to the bone. Now this fish honestly isn't that big, so I don't need to do this, but I want to do it just anyway. You'll see why in a minute. I'm just going to do two slices on each side, down to the bone like that. Okay, just like that. Two slices on each side. Do as basic seasoning as you can. Just some salt and pepper and the salt, and that's ready to be cooked. But watch what the little trick is now. So as you can tell, I've got my butter. That's always one of the best cooking mediums you can use for cooking fish. Now I've got this stick here. Let's clean it up a little bit. I'm gonna put it through the fish's mouth and I'm going to poke it into the meat, into the body, right by the rib cage. Now I'm gonna put a little bit of butter inside where the belly is, where the rib cage was. And in those slits that I cut, put a little bit of butter there also. All right. I'm gonna wrap this guy in some foil. Wrap it up tight. And that's it. That's all there is to it. That's a fish on a stick. Fish stick. Scales are off. I'm gonna eat everything, all the meat, down to the bone. All right, now these coals, they're just about hot enough so I can lay my fish right on top. 
There we go. All right, it's ready to be flipped. So while my fish on the stick finishes cooking, I just remembered that I had some shrimp. And this is just fr shrimp that you would buy from the grocery store. So why not eat my bait at the same time? I've never done this before, so I'm gonna deshell one of them. I'll leave the head on so I can hold it from there. Let me see if there's any guts that I need to take out of here. Just cut along the backside. Uh, not too bad, but might as well take that out. I can throw this right on the coals too. You know what, I'm not even gonna season this. I'm just gonna put it straight in there. And this one too. Ooh, smells great. All right, the fish is just about done, and I know shrimp doesn't take very long to cook. So let's get all these ashes off. Let's see how this turned out. Mmm, yum. Nothing like eating your bait after fishing. All right, I think it's time for the reveal. Oh, baby. That's ready to eat right there. Oh, yeah. Look at all that. That smells amazing. Wipe my knife off. And let's have a piece of this fish here. Wow, you can really tell the difference from bleeding it really well. This fish has no fishy taste at all. Look how white that meat is. I got to say, nearly all of the blood from that fish was bled out. And you can really, really tell the difference. I'll try bleeding it from the tail next time. The cool thing about if you cook a fish like this, wrapped in foil, or even if you cook it in a frying pan, if you cook it whole, you could take the entire spine out and there's no meat left on the spine like there would be with the filet. And what you're left with is this nice white meat. All meat, no bones. You just peel that spine off and that's what you're left with. Now for some shrimp, let's peel these shell off. And I'm having a feast out here. Imagine if some fisherman came down here right now. Mm, I could soak up that butter. That is not bad at all. So yes, I heard all your comments. Everybody wants to catch and cook. Not every single video is gonna be a catch and cook, but I do have an epic one that I'm going to film on Monday. I'm gonna be on the boat all alone by myself in the Pacific Ocean, and I'm gonna cook my catch on the boat. So that's coming up next week if I can get around to it. Anyway, thank you for watching and getting me to nearly 150,000 subscribers. That is amazing, unbelievable. I can't even imagine that many people want to watch these fishing videos, catching and cooking them on the cliffs. You know, giving me the opportunity to come out here and fish and film, post it on YouTube. Man, you have no idea how appreciative I am about that. So, as long as you keep supporting this channel, I'll keep making videos. And if you leave a comment on what you want to see, I'll make it.